Awesome. So welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, this is the Massive Masters Wednesday case study. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we do this every week. Our goal is to pick topics that we think will be of interest to folks that are joining. Um, if you have any other topics ever, when we get to the Q&A later, you can make some suggestions. We're happy to um, talk about different topics, especially what our, our people are listening, uh, eager to learn about. So this is an educational series. We are not financial planners. We are not lawyers. We are not accountants. Uh, we are telling you what Massive believes to be the correct information at the time that we're sharing it. Often we're sharing from our experiences and different things that happen. So make sure that you always get your own advice, uh, guidance for anything. So awesome. So if you've been living under a rock and you've been missing the massive master's programs, um, we did a little bit of change. So June 22nd, we decided we would combine two topics into one session. It just seemed like a really more efficient way for folks to spend their day. So we're going to have this in Dallas, Texas on Saturday, June the 22nd. It's a full day of learning. So we're going to talk about capital raising and asset management. So we're going to talk about how do you build your investor database? How do you build your capital raising machine? 506B versus 506C, how to be an, an effective asset manager, and then common pitfalls, mistakes to avoid. So it's an awesome day. You can scan to register. And I'm also going to pop in the chat a quick link because sometimes that's a little bit easier for joining. Um, we would love to have you. It's really, really been an awesome event. We've had a great time. So tonight we'll talk a little bit about massive capital the massive value add to investors and partners. Uh, we're gonna talk about our underwriting series. We're doing the Carolinas, North and South. We did bring in the big guns, our partners on two properties in the Carolinas. Um, that way we have some local knowledge on the call. Um, and then next week, our underwriting series, we're gonna talk about triple net leasing. And then of course, we always have time for question and answers. Um, you can put them as we're going, or we'll hang around near the end and answer any questions that we missed. So you can see Massive Capital, the map is where we're located. You can see we're definitely very Texas-centric, because that's where most of the partners are living. Uh, but we do have assets in Denver, Colorado, North Carolina, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And then we've been looking for triple net opportunities in Tampa, and Phoenix, Arizona. So Massive Capital is involved in equity fund, triple net brokerage, okay, which is mostly retail, triple net property management, again, mostly retail lifestyle centers. We do land development, triple net construction. We have tech and then the Massive Masters, uh, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more later. Mike, you want to hit next? Sorry. Did we lose Mike? Mike, Mike, are you still with us? I don't know what happened to Mike. He was driving the presentation. Did you kick him out, Sanjay, when you joined? <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't know. Let me open the presentation and I can share. Sorry, um, thank you. Oh, I think he's coming back in now. It's always fun when you have some technical glitches. We're going to get Brenda to sing and dance, maybe. I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> Did you finish the previous slide, Trevor? Um, we were just about done it. Sorry, and we yeah, we lost you. I I can share my I have it up. Oh, okay. If I go again, I guess Sanja, you can. Sorry. Okay, and so we are an owner operator of value add multifamily assets and a developer of triple net town centers. 
We do this triple net development with our partner, Realty One. Realty One has about $290 million in assets. Um, they've been doing this for 42 years. They're an awesome partner. And then at the bottom, you can see Massive Capital. We have uh, just under 1,400 units, 90,000 square foot space being built in X space. Um, we have $203 million of assets under management. Awesome. So a little bit summary on the left-hand side, 22 and 23, we did 15 closings. We have an LOI pending in San Antonio. Very exciting news. We have an LOI accepted in Houston, Texas. So more information on that. We're under contract for a 60,000 square foot class A retail development in Richmond. This will be started as a 506B offering. We're under contract in West Texas, 506B. So again, if you have a relationship with us, and you're interested in learning more about Massive Capital and you'd like to invest, make sure you connect with us. And then we do have another update on our Horizon opportunity um, in San Antonio. That is tomorrow night at six o'clock. Love if anybody could join and uh, learn a little bit more about that particular property. We're super excited about how things have been going at the property. And so we just wanted to do an update and the nice thing about this property is it is cash flow positive already. So we're very excited about that. And I also put the, the link in the chat to sign up for that. Oh, I forgot to start it, Trevor. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It there is. is your QR code and uh, bonus opportunity for a larger investment. Excellent. Awesome. I'm going to go to the next one, Sanjay. Mike has it. All right. So, Mike, do you want to talk through this section and then Sanjay will talk about the area? I'm going to let you go ahead, Trevor, I'm, uh, in case okay. I keep losing a connection here. So Not I'm a problem. Okay. So, Massive Value Add. Um, massive Capital wants to do group learning by actually doing. That is the big difference with Massive Mastermind. Um, our folks in our group, they're actively involved with Massive Capital at every level of the experience to become a syndicator. So they learn about underwriting deals. They learn all of the basics. We do underwriting in a group environment. Goes from a back to napkin to the next level, all the way up to partner reviews. Super exciting too, because a couple of the deals now that our students have been working on are actually the ones that we have under contract. So it's very exciting, right? So Massive Capital is involved in multifamily new development. There are lots of ways that you can partner with us. So obviously a limited partner investor, a lead co-sponsor, general partner. We also take investments in a JV or a solo 401k. Um, so the first two were done in syndications. And then obviously a JV is a very different, a couple of our land deals uh, currently are set up as JVs. It's a unique mechanism for a smaller group to be able to take down a smaller deal. So we are looking for folks that want to partner with us. So we do land acquisition, only off market opportunities. We're looking for retail joint development. So if someone has a piece of property and it's in a class A area, so we're looking for properties that are already in a good market or that you have under contract. We're not looking for deals that are already on the, you know, been listed and marketed by a broker. It really doesn't help us. We're looking for special unique. This is a link here where people can put their information put the information about their deal and have massive capital take a look at it. So we're also a GP, co-GP. So we do new acquisitions. We're always looking for multifamily. Right now, we're staying away from flat roofs in the coastal areas. Uh, we do asset management advisory. We have a full backend system that we use for our asset management. Um, we are some a debt loan guarantor. So the opportunity we have right now in West Texas, that's what uh, we're involved in in that. 
Um, and then obviously deal doing consulting. So KP due diligence, um, capital raising, legal planning, asset management, uh, massive capital is more than willing to be able to help out people and learn. And then of course we have the education program right now, the massive masters. So underwriting your market, group learning by actually doing. All right, we're gonna get to the meat of this. Sorry, we're not quite there yet. So these are the phases that we go through for multifamily, right? So you're in the acquisition phase. A lot of people think that's where the real work happens. And believe me, it does. Your massive capital is over, underwritten over 1,100 opportunities. And when we work with these, we take our students through underwriting, uh, resume, contract negotiation, sign, physical expansions, contract to close. In fact, we're doing a big due diligence on a property the next two days. We've invited all our masterminds, students, partners, potential partners and students. Um, and then in the middle, there's the acquisition, the loan guarantee. You have to have all of those things to be able to put a deal together. But what a lot of people don't tell you is the real work starts after you close the deal. You have to operate a business for five years. And so Massive Capital has asset management, advisory, property management, CapEx, all of the different things that you might need. And again, these are all part of the things that we train folks through on our mastermind. So where do you start at? Looking, a lot of people like to look in with one to two hours. What can you handle? Get to know local brokers, look for off-market deals. Underwriting till you can characterize an SMA. So start wherever, simulate a purchase, build a team that supports your MSA location, underwrite multiple cities to increase statistical odds of winning. Um, real estate is hyper local. So make sure that you've built it right down to the street of where you're doing. And then without master underwriting, you won't be able to identify is it a good deal or not a good deal. Um, a lot of people send us a deal and say, oh, this is a great deal and I've got an accepted LOI and we've already underwritten and looked at it and we're sometimes 10, 15% less what we think the offer should be. So buying right is super critical. Oh. Oh, were you going to talk, Mike? Yeah, no, no, just back to the last. So really it starts, this turns over to really going with Sanjay on uh, moving forward with, hey, let's jump in and dive into the North Carolina market. And the reason was, think, you know, is around, you know, look at, you know, what supports that MSA. And for us, like the North Carolina markets, you know, we we built a team around and Bobby and John on here tonight to to help us support us in doing deals in the Carolina markets as, as an example, you know, versus necessarily always just staying local and then just a little more background you know across the the deals we, we've gotten like everybody's seeing it like a lot more deals coming through the pipeline lately uh than uh, the earlier in the year and last year so uh, a lot of change in in the number of deals that have been coming through and looking at uh, as well and uh, just the tools we use around that, uh, that uh, as we go through there. And Sanjay, are you wanting to pick up here? Sure. Um, yeah, so from a technology perspective, you know, a lot, a lot of technology used in any field these days. Uh, when I was in the banking, the joke was banks are not, uh, are more of a IT companies these days than a finance um, kind of uh, true for us. So Coastal LoopNet, um, you know, Reonomy, kind of the back end data, a lot of the data there uh, and on the front end for analysis, Monday, our workflow, Red IQ uh, for underwriting and then Client Harbor, our CRM that, that we use. So uh, next slide here. Um, yeah, so the as we look into the uh, markets, each market, um, right, uh, 
each location kind of starts with the same structure. So last week we reviewed the similar structure for the Colorado market, but revenue, uh, you have your income, uh, controllable, uncontrollable components, and then you have your operational expenses, uncontrollable, controllable expenses. Um, within the, uh, uh, the operational expenses, the taxes, insurance, and labor cost is not really under our control, driven by the market, what happens in that market, what's there, uh, be it the weather pattern or you know something changes on the tax, tax side, uh, but all the other operational expenses, utility, maintenance, repair, uh, contract services um, are, are within our control. So, so uh, you know, those, those are the things we look at. And if you go to the next slide, we start to get into the uh, how, uh, just taking an example of the Fayetteville, which is one of the town hour and a half or uh, hour and a half or so from Raleigh in North Carolina, uh, on the top shows the insurance and taxes for, for that market. Um, the, uh, the uh, below, just as a comparison to Houston, one of the market under, under the Texas uh, area. So you see the insurance, uh, just such a uh, lower in the fatal market, almost less than half. And similar for the taxes, as you compare the taxes for, for the Carolinas uh, market. Oops. Sorry. Uh, just comparing that to and, and, you know, from a, from an underwriting perspective, this is a big deal because your uh, big part, portion of your income is going to insurance and taxes in Houston market as compared to North Carolina, every dollar increase in value, assuming you're, uh, you're getting insured for that higher value and, and tax keeping up with that uh, appraised value the bigger portion of your dollar is going to um, insurance taxes in, in Texas as compared to the Carolinas, is, you know, taxes and insurance take a very small, a lot less smaller portion. So overall expense ratios tend to be lower in Carolina's market. So, uh, this, so th this is a key market in underwriting and going into the detail underwriting and looking at it to compare those. So. Um, next, uh, and just uh, just the size of the market comparison for the size, um, the within the Carolinas market, um, you know volume is important. Um, you um, and and you know fate will you can see which is where one of our uh, properties with John and Bobby is. Um, is a is not the biggest, but it's not the smallest uh, market. But from top to bottom, you know, Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, uh, the bigger markets, the the second column kind of shows the asset values for for those markets, the number of units, the sale prices, and and kind of uh, lays it uh, there. So a lot of the times, the top. Um, from a pricing perspective, um, you know, you can, you can, it, it can be hard to uh, make the deals work. Whereas a little bit, little sleepy town, but not the sleepiest where you just don't have enough volume is a, um, uh, is, is there. Um, so just as a comparison at the bottom, Houston multifamily size, uh, is uh, all more than double of the uh, North Carolina, right? Like it's close to the total North Carolina market uh, is close to 135 and just the Houston market is 116. So, uh, so you know, it, there is an opportunity to grow for the Carolinas and looking at the history over the last uh, three decades, there, you know, Carolinas did well um, you know, a few decades ago, and then there was a slowdown as uh, a lot of uh, outsourcing happened. And the last decade, it has turned around and picked up quite a lot. So 
Um, so, you know, from, from that, the going forward is a very, very positive uh, outlook from that perspective. And on the left kind of shows the, uh, the various market distributed, um, kind of opposed to Dallas and Houston, where it's very concentrated in those two areas in, in Texas. Uh, it's a little bit of a distributed out across those markets. And if John and Bobby are here, um, or and able to speak, I'll let you comment on, I know you guys are very passionate about the growth between the Greensboro, Raleigh, Charlotte, um, Greenville markets and how this expanding between these cities. Awesome, awesome. A great, great presentation, guys. Love the, 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 the analytics that are on it. Uh, uh, I'm Bobby from Blue 22 Capital. Um, partners with Massive here in, in based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, uh, you know if we, we if we take it uh, uh, take a step back, I mean we 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 voted with our feet and made the move out here and really looked you know uh, foundationally at the you know foundationally at the population growth and the job growth. Uh, 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 you know in twenty two, I think we were behind Texas and Florida. Uh, North Carolina was number three, just in terms of the number of people that are moving here, and then and then. You know, we you you, you kind of look at the the macro trends that I think uh, Sanjay just uh, uh, mentioned. The the offshoring that occurred three years ago, you know, thirty three decades ago, uh, uh, with the beginning of Pasa Americana and, and kind of globalization, and what we're seeing is in, in a historical manufacturing base here. It's uh, we're seeing now the opposite end of that is uh, you know around COVID when we realized we couldn't manufacture our own masks and medicines you're seeing a real repatriation of uh, nearshoring and uh, onshoring and nearshoring in, in North Carolina with a, is, is got a great growth uh, both on A-class jobs, uh, the, 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 the Googles, the Metas, the, 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 the uh, video game guys, uh, uh, Epic Games, et cetera. Uh, you've got a lot of those. You've got the banking in, in, in Charlotte, the, the second largest banking center outside of New York City, uh, plus uh, the eighth largest uh, uh, airport hub. Um, you've got uh, uh, big drivers for both A-class jobs and and uh, and workforce housing. So it, it, it's, we're, as you can tell, I get really excited about kind of the, 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 the macro pieces of that. And then, yeah, you know, it, that, you know, is we've got the diverse industry base, technology, finance, manufacturing, agriculture, et cetera. And, yeah. and, and Bobby, you want to talk about the tax, uh, corporate tax? Uh... The lowest in the, in the country, 2.5, and they're going to go to zero. So you've got a very favorable business climate. You know, you're you have low tax rates and then uh, the regulatory environment the, relative to multifamily. It's it's not as fast as Texas if you have a non-paying tenant, but within 29 days you can you can have the sheriff there working for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So a, as an investor, uh, business owners, right? Uh, taxes is always a big big component here for us. So and you know Texas always takes the lead with uh, no income tax, uh, kind of the. Uh, headline that's always there, but when you look at the Carolinas, the corporate tax, um, it's it's one of the lowest currently, and it's a stair step decrease to 2030. Bobby, is that right? When it goes to zero? Yeah. By, uh, yeah. By the end of 2030, uh, and and you know, from real estate perspective, not as big of a deal. The tax itself for us or our investments or anything, but from a businesses that are relocating there for that favorable tax climate, helps the real estate drive the real estate in a very favorable way, which continues to help and support us. Um, so it's it's a big. Uh, Big, uh, big, big factor, I think, driving some of the businesses moving there um, and, and has been, which when I found out it was a big surprise for me, but, you know, it is what it is. They have figured out and a good incentive uh, to draw some of the steal some of the businesses there. Um, to, exactly. To I, might, I might add, I mean, I think that's that's kind of 
you, you've got that, you know, the, the private sector with the, with the, the companies making the move here, but you, and you have this conducive government, but then you also have the attraction of, 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 of federal dollars for transportation around it. There's a, I'll send a link here, but it's called the Carolina core that's investing in the, a, a the infrastructure, you know, the, the, the ports, the highways for the connectivity from throughout central care, you know, the, the core, plus you've got the, uh, 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 the mega sites for where they're, they're basically industrial parts for advanced manufacturing that you're attracting the likes of Toyota, uh, uh, the, the VinFast, the Vietnamese electric company, uh, the, the computer chip manufacturers. Those are the anchor firms that got about six different um, industrial um, advanced manufacturing sites. So a real, real great leadership and, and uh, uh, from, from pro business government. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby. Next. Yeah. Slide. So from a demographic perspective, of course, the density of the population matters. Um, you know, this is a residential business, residential, everything people is what we cater to. So uh, just specific to that Fayetteville market, uh, you know, smaller market, but where the property is, that's where the density of the population is. That's where the businesses are. They're driving uh, there. Uh, I think we have another view on the next slide for the uh, population. Next slide, Mike. Um, yeah, and, and the... Uh, uh, rent growth, the historical rent growth for, for that market, for that area. And, and you know, these histor historical perspective matters a lot is, uh, you know, anything is good if you're buying it at the right price. And from a pricing perspective, you really have to compare to your historical prices where you are at and what's happening. Uh, you could be at the peak, at the top, or, you know, where you are in the overall cycle. Uh, so looking at the historical performance uh, from that perspective, uh, you know, it's a good growth market and continues to grow on that side of, of, the, of the town. Uh, going to the next one. I think more on the historical performance. Uh, just just the sales volume and just a little bit of a uh, color chart showing the volume of the sales in, in previous 12 months. Um, yeah, so th those are just the factors that kind of go into the market to understand the market and then choosing that, hey, do we want to go into market, those markets or not, and, and where we would be, where would we want to uh, be at. So um, we did have a question, Bobby, earlier on about what do we think of the coast of Carolina? So I know in Texas, we're staying away from the coast, but it, you know, what are your thoughts or Sanjay, what are your thoughts of the coastal areas? We, we just got back from the coast. It's lovely. It's lovely to rent something there. Uh, I, but because of insurance and because of, of the high susceptibility of hurricanes, uh, um, we don't pay a lot of attention to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, all, all of this, a lot of those volume of data that you saw on one of the one of the slides, uh, mostly none of them are coastal. Um, we tend to stay away from coast coastal cities uh, right at the coast. Um, you know, Houston is is an hour hour and a half ish from the coast. So you know, as close as we get to the coast there, I think. Uh, but with the weather, the insurance, and all these patterns, we, we tend to stay away from the coastal cities, generally. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself, stick it in the chat. It's definitely an up-and-coming market. It's been growing for quite a while. Yeah, and, and we've seen quite a lot of uh, competition there. Um, some of the, uh, the starts and the volume that's coming online has gone up and um, uh, okay, so Weena has a question, why do you consider labor non-controllable? 
I see the argument, but also curious the thoughts behind it. Um, I, I think it's very obvious, Vina. It's uh, like a labor market perspective. It's really a supply and demand. Um, and, and labor, there's nothing else better demonstrated, demonstrates the supply and demand than the, than the labor market. You know, uh, if, if Walmarts and McDonald's are offering $18 an hour, who am I to say I can get somebody in my office at $15, $12 an hour, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a very, very little control that we have. Yes, you know, I can really look harder. Can I find somebody? And then they can find somebody else um, uh, is, is there. So, um, okay, I, I get your question. What makes it different, say, contract services? So, you know, so repair, repair maintenance, uh, you can make a similar argument, right? But repair maintenance, what you do is under our control, right? Like if, if you have a sewer line leak, how you handle it and what you do, I have seen on a sewer line uh, repairs being done for 80,000 that I would go and do it for 20 or 25,000. Irrespective of what the plumber's market rate is in that market, there are strategies, there are things. Of course, this plumbing is, is the bane of our lives in multifamily, especially these class Cs. Um, the, there's a huge difference, similar for contract services, right? The, the tree trimming, the pest control. Uh, sorry, sorry, guys, one second. Um, it's, it's a decision that what we do, how we handle it and where we go, uh, go there. So, uh, even marketing, right? Like marketing wise, yeah, there is a bare minimum marketing that you do, but beyond that, what you do is a decision by the, by the asset managers who are, who are doing this. So, uh, almost all the other line items on our OPEX, uh, we, we have a decision. We can make a different decision and do that. So hopefully it makes sense. Uh, what's the average cap rate in that market and what cap would be attractive? You want me to jump in on that one? Sanjay, please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a bark. Sanjay's dog. being attacked by a wild dog, it looks like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off camera, guys. I'm he didn't a, like I'm the answer a... to Venus, so she sicked his, a dog on him. <laughs> well, we'll see if, they, if she likes the answer for cap rates. The, I mean, it's, you know, cap rates vary widely across different markets in, in North Carolina. And I think, you know, Bobby spoke to, broadly speaking, the, the economic and population growth trends and just the for, sort of the favorable, favorable business environment within North Carolina writ large. But it's important to recognize that, you know, uh, there's a lot of lot of variability within even North Carolina. So if you're looking at Eastern Carolina, essentially in between the coast and getting into sort of Central Carolina, where you have Raleigh, Charlotte, those sort of Central Core corridors, there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of rural counties there. You have the I-95 corridor that's running through there, but there's really not a lot of of business prospects for growth. Do you see? demographically older older population groups you're not seeing young people move out to those areas and so if you're looking at say a you know a c a c class multifamily property say in rocky mount which is in eastern carolina on the i-95 corridor you could find you know you could find properties that are probably up and around a six and a half to seven cap now that's completely different from looking at uh you know uh the the southern business district in charlotte where you're going to see you know cap rates that are probably still um still somewhere in the you know low probably low fours right now so it's going to vary considerably across markets and so even within you know charlotte as you move out from uh of course charlotte out into the uh you know the tertiary markets and around charlotte you'll see cap rates go up a bit so it's really i mean it's really location specific uh, i think what you know i think what we are seeing though is a decompression in cap rates over the last year year and a half so you're seeing probably across the board a movement up of around uh 
around 50 basis points probably is what I would say. Uh, so it's going to vary differently. I mean, we, you know, the properties that, that uh, we bought, we bought in Fayetteville and, uh, and also in a, you can consider a tertiary market outside of, of, of Raleigh. You know, we have exit cap rates at around six, six and a half. And those are, you know, within those really core growth corridors, but um, in, you know, less, um, less, less, you know, population centric uh, areas such as sort of the downtown areas. And so it varies, but, um, you know, it's, it's, that, that's sort of the range you're going to see probably low to mid, low to mid fours uh, for some of the larger uh, metropolitan areas. And then, you know, out, out towards, you know, six and a half, seven, some of the, some of the rural areas. Although I would, I would uh, also defer to Hayden, who would probably have a lot of, probably has a lot more of a broader perspective in terms of uh, cap races. He's obviously seeing a lot of transactions across, across the state. Thanks, uh, John. Um, other question on the Fayetteville market. What are you seeing as the average rent rate in the Fayetteville market? The military has been such a large percentage of the population. Are you seeing influx of non-military and higher paying jobs developing? Um, Bobby, John, you guys want to answer that too? And we have seen some uh, decrease in the rental rates, right? So go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, uh, John will speak to kind of the more the, the the overall rental rates, but I could talk about more of the demographics. I think. Just even with our so one employer, you know, the, it being the uh, the uh, the hundred thousand, uh, the largest army base, uh, Fort Bragg now Fort Liberty, and um, and it, but you know we're, it, you're seeing you're seeing this town kind of develop because of 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 just the growth of North Carolina kind of bringing this out. They're completing the Beltway, Amazon, uh, just to, you know down the street from from us as a big is opening up a big logistics center there. Um, and then you have the Cape Fear Medical uh, Services, and then the the a lot of the hospitality. It still is a kind of the bread and butter. They they call it the steady eddy um, uh, that uh, that that the army base does provide that constant. When when other markets are super up, it's the steady one. When other markets are down, it's it's steady one. So so you do have a di a growing diversity of employment. We don't have any military. I think we've had one or two military in our thirty units. So. So it's not a, uh, there is a diverse uh, population there. And then regarding rents, I'll, I'll defer to my, uh, uh, the, the, the trends that we've seen, I'll defer to John. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the challenges, well, you know, I think across the Southeast, generally speaking, is just the amount of construction that took place over the last couple of years and what you're seeing in terms of deliveries over the last, uh, you know, last 18 months or so, so, you're seeing a lot of supply coming online. And then what you're also seeing is a good amount of that, uh, a good amount of the stimulus coming out of COVID where people were flush with cash and able to, right, want into as, as COVID was going away and people were wanting to get out and they had uh, a good amount of disposable income there, you know, they're able to look at moving, moving from, uh, from one apartment to another, so you saw a lot of movement within uh, within the market itself, and people that had you know had were able to pay two months rent plus security deposit. You're starting to see that stimulus dry up, and so although you still have broad, broadly speaking low unemployment, you're seeing people with less they're less flush in cash, and so that combined with just a, a general increase in supply is beginning to put pressure on occupancy and thereby also driving down uh, rental rates slightly. So I think, you know, I don't, I didn't see the latest numbers in CoStar in terms of what um, rent, rent increases are. I mean, I, I want to say they're probably flat for, you know, flat, maybe slightly above for three star uh, properties getting five star properties you're seeing a, a good amount of decline as most if not all of the new supply coming online is is class a and so you're seeing a really an oversupply and higher vacancy rates in class a and you're seeing class c but it's still pushing things down and making things more competitive so you know you're looking at probably for a class a like a two-bedroom class a uh you know you're looking at somewhere between 13 
you know, 13 to 1450 for a two bedroom, whereas for a class C, you're somewhere in between uh, 1,000 to 1150, 1200. That's about, that's about what we're seeing right now for, uh, for rental rates. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then the the question, uh, Ken, is it me or am I not seeing much in the class A or high end V class? Why is that? So, uh, so, you know, the last year and a half, the starts have been, uh, the new construction have been going down, whatever was in the pipeline in the it, in there before that, before the rate increases was kind of going there, but it has really slowed down. Um, so yeah, so the start's been declining and, you know, the demand in markets like North Carolina's, the Carolinas is still building up. So we, we think, you know, if you can find the right financing, right money, it's a great time. But again, the, the money is just so expensive that those projects just don't pencil out and it's hard to, hard to make them work. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. What else? Any other questions? Yeah, I was I wasn't uh, uh didn't know. Yeah, maybe there's some more questions. Also, was gonna ask. Uh, we do have one of the get one of the uh, uh, Hayden on here as well. If if you wanted to share, Hayden's one of the brokers out in the Carolinas. We've been working with the massive masters. Uh, again, we are targeting this around. It's a you know private, you know a, a highly vetted community really of, of business owners. If you think about that and more you know some corporate employees and and you know already real estate investors that want to really build or grow from where they are and and want to be become you know general partners or even bigger as the general partners they are uh towards you know commercial real estate assets so it's really what the massive masters is about did we lose you mike our investment uh portal so if you're interested in investing or even looking at deals, you sign up in the portal, there's no cost, there's no fee, there's no risk to signing up. Uh, you are get you further closer into us and into the system with us. So, and the uh, the rest of the discussion later, uh, if for those that stick around would be last, I'm gonna, this will be my last slide for now, unless people have question about the masters tonight. Uh, but again, it's um, it may may or may not be for you, right? It's uh, uh, it is uh, expensive. It's got a cost to it. You will be working. You'll be challenged. You'll be like, hey, we need you know, we're we're pushing people along. Like we got daily calls going on. It's not you know as much as you got to invest of your time. We're here for you to do that, and and it's okay, right? It's it may not be for everyone. Uh, but you know, as we go through, you'll see, and uh, time will tell. And and the more you come along and the, get to go know us, uh, you may you see the the process and how it works. And we help try. You know, we guide through that whole step. You know, with you. So done with you, not done for you, and not do it yourself. So. Yeah, it's an awesome community. And I'm going to do one last shameless plug, too, for the Massive Capital She Ladies group. So they meet every other Tuesday. Next week is at a special time. So it's 3 Central. And we probably have, not if anyone's on here that was a guest before, no offense, but we probably have the biggest guest uh, so far on the thing. Although Sharon Lecter was pretty high up there for me. Um, Elena Cardone will be next tuesday afternoon so any ladies uh, make sure you don't miss out it should be very exciting so yeah excellent so and if anybody's late don't worry replay is posted up within 48 hours on our youtube channel any more questions this is uh, John again here from the 22 yeah. Capitalist. Just, uh, I think, just to make it, uh, just to make a note that uh, when Bob and I started out not too long ago, we were pretty new to the to the multifamily scene, and uh, we progressed immensely with the support 
and the mentoring and the coaching of uh, of massive capital. And so, you know, I just 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 to relate that experience that, uh, you know, we uh, it takes a lot of work, takes a lot of effort, but with the right partners and, and the right mentors, the right coaches, it uh, you know, you put you put the work in and you see the results. And so I just want to give you guys a shout out for all the support that you've given Bobby and I and getting Blue 22 Capital off the ground here and and uh, just just want to uh you know uh thank you guys for all the all the support and all the hard work you guys have been putting into this yeah we really appreciate that uh you know we really appreciate you guys. We're, Both for partners. We're, we're not looking for students we're looking for partners and that there's yeah, a big it's... difference right we we want to grow together um that, that's super important to us so and and we love working with you and bobby so it was 80 doors ago, so like yeah. eight, 18 months ago. So, yeah, and it's a, big, a great accelerator. Yeah, awesome. Any other questions? All right.